So today I'm here at the town of Cary Hemlock Bluffs Nature Preserve at 2616. If you want to plug that into your uh, uh, your GPS, uh, this here I, I I want to say it's called Kildare Farms Road. I, 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 that's that's what I think the name is. I wanted to show you the artwork here at the gate. Pretty cool looking, huh? And uh, next video I want to take is we're going to walk up to this structure up here because you got to see this because I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. I've already walked around it. I had to make a couple phone calls and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get on the trails. Uh, from what I understand, there might be as much as five or six miles of trails here. Uh, you know, I guess if you walk just an individual trail, it could be just a two mile loop. Uh, I can't wait to see these hemlock trees. Uh, I, you know, I hate to say it, I'm not a nature guy. I don't even know. But I guess this is the only place that they grow other than uh, up in the mountains. So somewhere, I, 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 you'd have to look it up on the, uh, the internet to see how unique this place is. I mean, a lot of people have been directing me here in Cary, North Carolina. So uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's go back up to the structure. That'll be the next clip. And then, uh, and then we'll get started on the hike. Should be a fun day. So as we get started on the hike here, uh, we got the Chimney Swift Tower. Let me back up and get you the view of that. Uh, I didn't know what the hell this was. I'm glad they got this plaque here. This tower provides a summer nesting site for a pair of Chimney Swifts. They're fast flying birds, winter in South America, migrating to the Eastern US. Man, that's a long flight. <laughs> in parts of the Midwest from April to October. Because they are unable to perch, Chimney Swifts cling to vertical surfaces along with their tail as a prop nests are made of tiny twigs cemented with their cemented with their saliva Ugh, sounds like a spider and attached to the inside of the chimney or hollow tree currently many building chimneys are, are capped or lined with steel rather than brick making them useless to the swifts due to the decline of usable chimneys artificial towers provide habitat for the beneficial insect eating species for nesting migration and stopover sites. So anyway, I did not know what the purpose of this facility is coming up, but until like, cause I came up here a second ago and I understand now it's bus parking only right here, you know, of course there's a parking lot down there. So let's, uh, let's walk up here. Of course, uh, you know, these are just the rules. We don't need to read that. And then of course, now I see the sign. This is an outdoor education facility. So I imagine what happens. Let's get the whole facility on the on the thing. Boy, that's a lot of construction just to have a few people sit on them benches occasionally. And I guess the person that's doing the education would probably stand underneath that Hemlock Bluffs arch right there, and uh, and probably describe uh, you know some things that you know information you might want to know uh, about the park. Uh, you can see it's quite beautiful here. This is in the. This is in Cary. I mean, you know, I mean, they, they, this is a natural. I mean, they have preserved some really good stuff here. I'm glad to see it. There's a lot of construction going on here, um, so the, they, the the area is getting built up. And so here's a little child's children's nature trail. Uh, not much to it, you know. I guess the kids might uh, might have some fun in there. There's a couple of signs. I'm not going to go over and read them. And uh, and then we're coming up on this. Um, this, uh, well, I, I want to call it a welcome center, but uh, we'll, maybe we'll get a little bit of this on the video next before I get on the trail. I mean, you got the little tunnel to crawl through and a little playhouse over here. So I guess the kids could have some fun in there. All right, let's get up here. All right, we'll start with the bathroom. Uh, there's just one stall. <laughs> so, and uh, let's head on out. So you do have bathrooms here. Now, what I was surprised, this is called the nature center. And uh, it's closed, although it looks like there's an employee. I guess that's a classroom over there. I'd, obviously, I was trying to get in the building just to see what was in there. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's just get on the trail. Um, I, the first trail, I have no idea. I'm just going to walk around and, uh, you know, we'll just kind of, I think there's four or five or six different trails. And uh, we'll read as we go along, try to figure out. Let's hear, here's coming up on the map. So let's kind of see what we got here. So uh, this is why I said you probably got maybe five miles of trails. Who knows? So we've got the um, uh, East Hemlock Bluff overlooks the Swift Creek Loop Trail. And then I guess the Beech Tree Cove. I don't know. Beech Tree Cove overlooks. Boy, that might be cool. Chestnut Oak Overlook. Chestnut Oak Loop Trail. So I'm going to go. Where the hell does it show where I'm at here? 
because I want to go left and do this this long trail because I think we can get that in um, okay well there's the outdoor education facility I guess well here's the nature center okay so we were just in the bathroom so I've just come down to here so if I make a left and go here and then make another left we should be uh, good yeah killed there there it is killed our farm multi well, that's a multi-use trail. That's another trail. I didn't, I didn't even know about that one. But that's so it's Kildare Farms Road. That's what I was saying. So um, let's get started. So uh, we're, let's see. That's as West Hemlock Bluffs to the left. Is that where we want to go? Chestnut Oak. Yeah. Yeah. See, we want to go left. So all right, let's get going. And boy, I tell you, look at all this mulch they've got down. You could hike this on a... It says, warning, due to hazardous conditions, trails are closed. Please inquire in the nature area for more information well as we saw nobody's there so i'm going to probably sneak over to those trails i ain't worried about hazardous conditions what are they, what's 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 i mean of course if it's a bridge i ain't gonna cross it but uh so let's uh we'll go right since it's directing me this way and uh we'll get in here let's lead this hemlock bluffs is a unique partnership between the state of north carolina and the town of Cary that helps conserve plants and wildlife our mission is a habitat protection environmental stewardship and nature education so there you go that's uh rei by the way rei's got uh, some good equipment i always get my mountain house uh meals from from rei and if you're a, a prepper um that's a good place to shop for some uh, survival food and i call it survival food of course uh you know on on most of the channels on uh on tv you'll hear about um uh patriot f patriots for us or patriots food supply i can't remember the name of it but uh, we'll see how far we get uh i don't know um might be a short hike uh like i said I'm, it's so late with with the place closed and maybe we can sneak through them cones and go down a ways and you know if i see something dangerous i, I won't do it let's keep going so whatever reason they have the fencing coming in over to the edge here i don't know what that's all about i mean i mean i'd like to get it right over to the edge and then here's another spot it looks like we're going to be going down 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 some stairs and that's fine there's some doggy bags i guess you, so you can bring dogs here that's a question i get asked quite often so let's come right over to the edge danger keep off the bluffs Ooh, yeah you know what i'm going to jump right out there and uh, um tumble down that and see how see how i do you know uh, but that is quite beautiful. I can't tell. Yeah, this is what looks like a little stream down here at the bottom. Hopefully you're getting the view. Um, so this is a good view right here. I don't know what that other place was all about. So let's, uh, let's get a view of the stairs real quick on this clip. And uh, we'll just head on down to the bottom. It looks like there's another sign here. Uh, let's take a look real quick. So this is, uh, let's see what it says. A mountain view. Envision the weather, erosion and weather combine to form these massive bluffs and provide the scenic mountain-like views you see below. Okay, so we're going to be heading on down. I'll get the next clip when I get down there. So here's another sign. Glimpses of the mountains. The round shiny leaves growing along the hillside are known as galax. This is a plant much more common to the mountains of our state. And there it is right there for you to look at. Boy, good time of the year. They're all coming in. You got to see them. And uh, looks like we're continuing down, down, down. Tried to get the wildlife on the video. Can you see the squirrel here? I've seen about five of them since I got here. I guess they like the hemlocks, huh? Check them out. Little moving guy. They're so cute, aren't they? I know a lot of people look at them as rodents, but... Uh, you know, I think all God's creatures deserve to, to live. I, I try not to even kill spiders, you know, and certainly never kill a snake. Snakes, uh, we, me and my uncle were talking about that today and how important snakes are because he's, he's found two in his house here in Cary. And, uh, and I was really proud to hear him say that he just captured them and put them outside, you know. And uh, hell, he even had one in his attic uh, probably. And that was a beautiful thing. There's probably a mouse up there. And I bet that snake chased a mouse right into his attic and uh, probably cleaned it right out for him. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the beauty of snakes. So here's another sign. Let's see what we got. The bluffs. More than 200 eastern hemlocks, and I, Tusca canadensis, 
grow along the portions of the north facing bluff. This rare relic uh, population of trees is far from the species normal range in North, north Carolina mountains. I was right. And uh, some of the larger trees are hundreds of years old. But look at this view. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Wow. Look at that. That is it. Ah, it's a creek, I guess, but uh, it, you could look at it as a stream. I'm not, you know, someday I got, should try to figure out the difference between a river, a creek, a stream, you know, and whatever. And I know this is the size, but I just wanted you to get the view of everything here. And look at here. You can see the trail down there at the bottom. It looks like it's on a raised uh, area. So uh, we'll get some more when we get down there. This is a nice touch because coming up, you might want to just sit there and have a picnic and... Uh, you know, this is, uh, it's quite beautiful. Trash cans are always important along the way. So let's get one more view before I cut this clip off because I'm coming up onto another viewing area <coughs> with another bench, which is good. Because I'm like, I hate going down on the first part of my journey. I prefer to go up as we've talked about in many, 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 many videos. Uh, but uh, unfortunately we're going down. Let's do the, let's read the sign. Our namesake, hemlocks along the bluffs are very rare in this area, otherwise found in the western part. Hey, I think they already said that, so. But uh, here's another view of, of down below. Way down low. Way down low. So this is the Swift Creek Trail that we're getting ready to do. I can see the sign down there. So, let, I will get, uh, when we get to, there's another sign down here. We'll get that, read that sign, and I'll show you the uh, the bridge that we're going to be walking on, or the, 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 uh, the trail. And uh, what, let's get on down there. So let's get the view right here. You see the sign, Swift Creek Trail. Another trash can, always a nice touch. Let's come down here and read this sign. And then you can see the bridge kind of rotating through. Don't think it, this is going to be much of a hike and, uh, I don't know, sneaking through the cones. Probably not a good idea, but I'm going to try to do it anyway. Life abundant. The rich soil provides... Provided by frequent floods yields a high diversity of plant life on the forest floor. Christmas fern, wild geranium, and trillium. I think that's how you pronounce that. So here you can see, uh, I'm just going to walk this clip up to the uh, the little uh, wooden bridge here. Isn't this nice? Look at that. Look at that. All right, so here we go. So we've got another sign coming up, but you're basically hiking along a wooden bridge next to a stream, or the Swift Creek stream. I guess that's the name of it. Saving a section of Swift Creek. A portion of Swift Creek was restored by the town of Cary. The bank was repaired. Trees were planted and long veins were planted, placed in the creek. The root systems of the newly planted trees, along with the logs in the creek, will work together to reduce stream bank erosion. Native trees also provide habitat for life. All right, so we got two people that came by. Looks like a pretty popular area here in North Cary. Boy, I tell you, they really, want, they really don't want you going over and playing in the creek, do they? Have to, not only you're up on a raised platform, which I find difficult to get off and on to, you, uh, they got a, a fence along the way. So uh, here's uh, working wetlands. Vegetation in the floodplain provides a buffer that helps control sedimentation and erosion in Swift Creek. So, and then stay on the boardwalk. Keep out of the creek. But uh, boy, I t look at the money, man. Everywhere I go, these got these huge boardwalks. I, I don't know where Kerry finds the money for all of this stuff. Uh, it's uh, quite, uh, quite, quite the uh, marvel to to walk on these raised wooden bridges. And, you know, I guess you know we'll allow rabbits and squirrels uh, to get underneath the boardwalk here. Um, looks like we're coming up off of the boardwalk, and we're just going to be on a trail here in just a second. Uh, I'll let you know when we get there. So here's another side, remnants of the past. You got West Point on the Eno. I don't know where that is. And, and we've got Yates Mill. And since the late 1700s, grist, I don't know what a grist is. Maybe leave a comment below. Grist mills have been found in this area. You are standing on the dam of a mill pond that was active many years ago. Okay, so... I guess this used to be a dam. Now it's a, now it's a trail with mulch on it. You know that is nice that they got it mulched. You know, um, you know, because it when it rains, man, I, I hate coming home with mud and all over my shoes and, you know, it's uh, and I imagine it probably stays pretty wet down in here most of the time. So this is uh, it's a nice touch. So we're on just another little wooden bridge going down, again off of the. Well, I guess that'd be called a dam. And I'm just kind of continuing through the forest. 
I don't know. Let's take a look at this tree. Man, that is tall. I don't know if these are hemlocks or not. They, I guess they could be, but there's no sign. I'm not a you know, tree uh, connoisseur. I couldn't tell you other than they're really, really big. <laughs> you know, I mean, really tall, even taller than pine trees the other day. So Carrie has got the trees. I've got another sign coming up. We'll get that in a sec. Ooh, speaking of snakes. Well, I don't think I thought that was a snake, but that's a lizard, I guess, of some sort. That's the spring pepper and the, sp oh, the spotted salamander. Okay, temporary pools. These shallow depressions fill with water during late fall and provide a fish-free habitat for many breeding frogs and salamanders. So you can just kind of look at it. Kind of stagnant water. It looks to me like a mosquito breeding ground. So imagine on a hot, humid day, you might want some bug netting down here. <laughs> you know, that's, but I could be wrong. Maybe they spray for them or something. So we're coming up on another bridge. I'll get a view off of that bridge of the, of the uh, well, I, don't, I guess just standing water. I can't call that a creek because it doesn't look like it's flowing to me. So coming up on a little bridge, I mean, we're still within these massive trees where the leaves are just coming out on them. And uh, coming up on a little bridge, I'll get you a, a shot of the L the lagoon, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, off to the uh, right here. Uh, and then it uh, looks like there's another wooden bridge coming up up here, but that's kind of what we're just hiking over. And uh, we'll get a view from the other side. So a lot of stagnant water down here. Yeah, well, boy, look at that massive tree. Wow, look at the trunk on that thing. Holy moly. All right. So we're walking up onto another uh, wooden bridge here and uh, we got another sign right here. I just thought I'd cut the video on. This is a race to the top. Most of these, most of the trees growing here compete best in moist, rich soil and some are only found in the floodplain like swamp chestnut oak. Okay, I haven't seen anything that says that that was a hemlock tree. Maybe that's a chestnut oak, I don't know. If you know, leave a comment below. So for people to, to learn. But uh, so now you back up on a, like a boardwalk, just, just kind of walking back. Uh, I don't know what this wooden thing is in the tree over here. Uh, maybe, I don't know, not even gonna speculate. Too big for a birdhouse, that's for sure. Unless that's a big bald eagle or something that would nest in there. So we're, we're coming around, let's keep on going. One good thing, you'd never get lost on this trail. <laughs> and you don't need a cell phone. Uh, you, if you have a heart attack, there's plenty of people that'll make a phone call for you. But uh, coming up on the next sign here, let's see. Long live the forest. Tulip polar leaves and flower, red oak leaves. Tulip polar bark, red oak fall color. These fertile slopes are dominated by trees like the northern red oak, the tulip parlor, and beech. Birch, birch, or beach, a birch. They can live for hundreds of years. It's so coming up on two signs. Uh, we'll get both of them on the video because it might be a short hike today. That's why I'm reading all the signs. Wetlands for wildlife. Floodplains are a key habitat for many ty many types of wildlife. They provide important food and cover. So we're coming up on just a little bridge. Uh, very nice. I mean, you know, it's uh, kind of a little. Well, I guess it's probably a, a place for drainage where water's gonna roll through. Uh, don't see any running water, but let's read the next sign. Let's see what this has to say. So, a different landscape. Perfectly straight dishes attest to the past farming history of this area. They helped to drain the site for growing row crops. Huh. Well, I mean, these trees are, well, hundreds of years old, so I guess uh, they must be talking about a different area of carry. I, I don't know where these things. Hey, we got another sign coming up. Let's uh, let's get that one. Man, too many signs. I'm sorry for the length of the video, but I do find this stuff interesting, and I like to go back and, and watch it myself. But look off in the distance here in the woods. Very pretty. Man, these trees are. Even the, look at those pine trees. Pine trees right along the side of of the other trees. You don't see that often. Usually one of them will crowd the other one out, but I guess they had gotten tall enough that they get enough sunlight to survive. But let's uh, let's do this one here, a fresh start. 
and uh, uh, annual prevented for oh it's just giving you the farmland has changed to forest land over time most of these most wow I, I was thought they were hundreds of years most of these trees are less than 70 years old okay well I, this one's interesting well let's look at the um, the progression here this is very interesting so the first year you're gonna have weeds like crabgrass and then two, two to four you're gonna have annual and parental weeds uh, horseweed Broom's edge, aster, and ragweed, and then it progressed into well, that's what I say in pine seedlings and saplings, uh, short leaf pine and uh, lullaby pine, and then you had a young pine forest and a developing understory of hardwoods, and then a mature hardwood forest of uh, oaks and hickory. So uh, that's the years of cultivation. That now that was a cool sign. Isn't that interesting how life progresses, you know, or a, or a forest can progress? I mean, yeah, I know that the Green New Deal, everybody says we're destroying the world, but it, you can see that, look at this, in a 70-year period, this used to be farmland. <laughs> I mean, this is it's completely reclaimed into a massive forest. Well, I'm coming over to the stairs to head back up, so that'll be it for this trail. And, uh, and then I'm, I'm, I don't know, I got to look around. I, maybe they got a hidden camera, who knows, and see if I can sneak through them cones and at least go a ways down that trail. I mean, I, I, I don't know why these, these, these places don't trust people. Well, I mean, there are a lot of stupid people, no doubt about it, me being one of them. But I mean, you know, if I, I got common sense enough that I get down the trail and, you know, I see a rickety bridge or something, I'm not going to do it. I don't think you have to close the whole damn trail, but I mean, I'm sure they feel they have to for liability purposes. So at least that way, if I uh, do kill myself, they... Nobody can sue them. Okay, let's get back up the stairs. So I came up here to see if we could sneak onto those trails they're saying is closed. There is a bicycle over here, so there might be somebody here somewhere. But anyway, look at this. So there's, that's, that was a bat box on that tree. I didn't know what it was. Bats live in places called roosts. They naturally roost during the summer in the tree cavities among leaves, among bark, and some species have adapted to roosting in man-made structures such as houses and bridges. Bat boxes provide alternate roosting space to, help, to keep bats from roosting in attics. Here at Hemlock Bluffs, we have two different types of bat boxes. The traditional bat box above, see that one, and rocket bat boxes left. I don't see where the rocket bat box is, but... Uh, um, vertical sheltered space for bats to hang. Bats use roosts to rest and, and, uh, and raise their young. Bats are important because they control the insect populations, especially those pesky mosquitoes. They can eat up to 1,000, wow, 1,200 insects an hour. Man, I knew they move fast, man. You know, have you ever seen them just You know, 1,200, I mean, man, oh man. Hell, I'm lucky if I kill, you know, 30, well, I actually on one trip, I killed a lot of mosquitoes, but I guarantee it wasn't 1,200 an hour. Bats face many threats, including habitat loss, and fungal disease called white nose syndrome. Most common bats to find in bat houses are big, oh, big brown bats. That'd be scary as hell, wouldn't it? And little brown bats. You know, there's only two, I guess I am kind of afraid of bats, you know, spiders especially, but bats the most. And uh, so here's the, here's the bathrooms. I'm just kind of walking around to see if I see anybody and because uh, I want to, I'm going to sneak on that trail because I don't think there's anybody here. I just saw one person go into the uh, the classroom over here. But let, let me just check the place out. So we're we're on the forbidden trails. There's nobody here. I checked out the whole place. So unless somebody shows up, and there's hardly any cars in the parking lot. So we'll go down here a ways and see if we see anything dangerous. Oak Hickory Forest. These woodlands are dominated by trees like oaks, hickories, and sourwoods which scattered small shrubs like blueberries and huckleberries. So I hope they've got signs to identify which, well, of course, a pine tree we can identify, but I'm not sure. I mean, I, I always thought, well, uh, oaks in Florida are a hell of a lot different, I think, than oaks here in uh, North Carolina. Because I don't know if you've seen them, they look like something out of the, uh, uh, um, what the, the headless horseman, you know? where the, he's going to come out of the bottom of those oak trees, but these just look like regular trees to me. Um, but it's, it's uh, quite beautiful. Got a helicopter flying overhead. Little uh, little ravine down there. So, uh, of course, I uh, imagine uh, there's the, there's the, the um, taboo things not to do, like walk past the cones and hike a trail that's closed. Now, why, you know, I haven't seen anything yet to determine why this trail is closed. You know, and I'm certainly people walking on it. I mean, sometimes you close a trail for reclamation or just to, to do maintenance or, or uh, preserve it. 
Well, but this, it's not gonna hurt anybody to walk on this trail. You know, if nothing else, I would just uh, rope it off in the dangerous places and let people come out here and hike this a bit. I mean, I, I tell you what, people take this, this safety bullshit too far, man. Every time you go into a damn bathroom as a cuidado or, you know, it's slippery when wet. I mean, gosh dang, if you don't, if you can't look at the floor and see that it's wet. I mean, I know they got to do it for liability, but that's just flipping stupid in my opinion. All right, let's, let's get going. Um, I think we're going to get a good hike in today. This is, this is good. So here looks like they did a controlled burn. I suppose, unless it caught fire and they just put it out. And then we're coming up onto kind of a, a little area. And uh, from what I saw to, to hike the long trail, you take the left fork here. Uh, this property is managed with pre yeah, prescribed fire. So that was a control burn back there. Please stay on the trail and out of the creek. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, let's go to the left here. And this should be the long loop around the area. Worst that can happen is we come to a place where uh, we got to turn around and come back, and that's fine. I'd like to get a little bit of exercise. Um, so it's uh, there's another trail, you know, of course, going off to the right because it is a loop, and uh, might as well enjoy the day. I'm, you know, I think I uh, got plenty of time left before it gets dark, and the weather forecast that I saw originally said it was going to start raining at uh, at five o'clock. Okay, and uh, but I don't. I don't see, you know, and then of course I saw another weather forecast. I said it wasn't going to start raining until tonight. So I could be a drowned rat when I get back to the car. But uh, you can see so far. Well, tell me, what do you see that why the trail's closed? Hasn't made sense to me so far, but who knows? Maybe when we get there, we'll, we'll understand. So I was going to pass this one by the eastern box turtle and uh, the raccoon. Roads are always a challenge for wildlife. The nature preserved as a valuable, safe living place. Duh, what a waste of a sign. But I did have a reason I got that on the video was I had a raccoon story. One time uh, we were camping <laughs> and a buddy of mine, he was, he prided himself on being a, a camp cook. And uh, he was cooking for about, I don't know how many of us were there, six or seven of us. And he wanted to make this huge pot of, uh, I guess, stew. I can't remember, I mean, but it was good. I mean, I'll give him credit, man. And uh, and so when he went, to, because he got there late and this guy, he just didn't know how to camp. And uh, he got there late as hell. And uh, you, know, you never want to set up camp in the dark or set up late. And especially you don't want to be cooking until midnight, which is more or less what he did. And then of course, we all had a bowl of stew, but you know, you can't eat but so much and go to bed, try to sleep in a sleeping bag. Anyway, so uh, about three o'clock in the morning, there's a clatter out on the picnic table. <laughs> there, was a, there was a raccoon who had pulled the lid off. He left a pot on the picnic table, you know. I mean, how stupid is that? I would at least put it in the car, you know. But uh, yeah, he left it right on the picnic table. I, that raccoon was one fat raccoon when he was done because he ate that whole pot of beef stew. I didn't, I mean, can you imagine? Look, there's little guys. Friendly fire, infrequent control burns. We already talked about that. But I just thought that was a hell of a story. I can't imagine what, because he had to unzip his tent and look out there, and he said all he could see was the tail of the raccoon sticking up out of the pot. Because like I said, it was a big pot, hell of a lot of food. And man, that, I don't know if the raccoon had some help, maybe, but uh, he said he only just saw the one, and it ate a whole pot of stew. How can their stomach be that big? All right, so, so far, I'm not seeing anything, but why the trail will be closed. Doesn't make sense to me, but I'm enjoying the hike. Very, very nice trail. Thought I'd cut on a scenery video. So the trail, you're just more or less walking by a creek here. And I'm coming up on a sign and I, you know, I always try to point out the benches. It's nice, uh, nice to have the benches. And uh, so, um, so you can see, uh, well, it says habitat transition and progress remain on the trail well of course you know i'm nobody well it, some people might not remain on the trail but uh so but we did we're coming up on this sign so that's why i cut on but i wanted you to see what we're hiking through at this point it says waterfront property small streams like this one provide important places for many aquatic animals like salamanders and crayfish for, for most of the year so you can see what they look like that's the two lined salamander and crayfish Boy, man, I tell you, as a kid, we hunted crayfish, but we, I wasn't in Louisiana. We didn't know how to eat them. That would have been nice if we knew how to cook them and eat them because we certainly caught a whole bunch of them. But uh, anyway, uh, a couple of birds here. That was cool. 
and uh, we're just continuing along the trail. So far, I, I don't know why it's closed. I, I have not seen anything. There's a squirrel, check him out, and a bird. Well, there's just lots of wildlife back here. I still don't know what a hemlock looks like. I wish, <laughs> I wish I did. I was hoping they'd have a sign, you know, this is a hemlock tree, there's a squirrel moving. Look at him. So maybe, I, I mean, hell, who knows which of these trees are hemlocks. You know, the, the area here is surrounded by neighborhoods and stuff. So, you know, if you did have a problem, you could probably get through the woods to somebody's house and make a phone call. I don't have my cell phone with me because I just, I don't like carrying it when I hike. Unless I, you know, I feel like I'm doing something that's going to endanger me. All right. So I do try to get the benches on the on the thing, and then I'll, I'll go back and read this real quick, as <clears throat> I almost trip. All right, so uh, ah, it's just kind of a nothing sign. Rocking and rolling. Rolling hills in this dry, rocky area feature exposed quartz veins that are much slower to erode than other surrounding rocks. And, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I would think rocks would be slower to erode. Uh, well, of course, I guess quartz veins are sleeping slower, yeah. But here's why the trail may have been closed, okay? I'm guessing that people were slipping and sliding through here. So they're doing, uh, putting down some mulch. Now, if they said on the maintenance, I mean on the sign, closed for maintenance, you know, then I wouldn't even have tried it, you know? But uh, they didn't. They just said, uh, you know, closed uh, because of danger. So you can see they are putting uh, mulch down in here, and that's the reason why. Now, if, once we cross, there's a little bridge down here. I can see the dirt. Now, if, if it was a wet day, you might have difficulty climbing up this path uh, without slipping and sliding and uh, falling down because I can see what's coming. You see it over here? Let's, let's get a little further along here. But even that, I mean, good Lord. I mean, think about the Appalachian Trail. I've hiked, I've hiked stuff that <laughs> make that look like a cakewalk, you know. And, and there's certainly, you know, the rocks get a lot slicker than, than the dirt and stuff. So I, I don't know what the hell they're talking about other than maybe they, they want to get some mulch down. We got one more sign coming up. I'm going to read that. I mean, this bridge looks sturdy to me. How long, we've, we've hiked across bridges that didn't look anything like this. So, so far, I don't understand why the trail is closed. But let's see, uh, creatures of the seep. Ooh, this sounds interesting. This narrow seep provides moisture at most times of the year for a rich variety of plants and animals. Okay, and that's the southern lady fern and the slimy salamander. Ooh, boy, I tell you, as a kid, you'd be playing with them, but I wouldn't be touching them now. So here's what I'm talking about. So I, if you, if this was wet, you could, you could slip and fall. And I mean, maybe they're just thinking they need to get this mulched. I don't know. I haven't seen anything that, you know, makes this trail, uh, you know, dangerous or anything. Or, you know, you need caution. Uh, you tell me. I mean, I, I liked a hell of a lot worse than this. So the trail has some up and down. So you do get your heart rate up, but here's another bench. There are quite a, quite a few of them along the way, which is nice. Um, coming up on another sign, that's why I cut the uh, video on, but some of these signs are stupid, man. You know, green areas are important for wildlife and communities. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> Here we go, knock, knock. Oh man, I love these woodpeckers. That's the polluted woodpecker and the red-billed woodpecker. Several types of woodpeckers are common to these woods and we'll use standing deadwood trees for nest sites. So yeah, you can see we're kind of going up and down. Now I'm going down, but this is what it's looking like. And here's another tree for you. You know, so you can kind of see they are, they went for 70 years old. That's a, that's a hell of a lot of growth, man. But uh, like I said, they said this, this soil is very fertile and I guess that's what helps them. Now we, eventually, who knows, we may come up on a bridge that's out, but it seems to me you could just hike right through those woods if you had to, you know, um, if, if you want to just ignore the caution signs like I did. So uh, let's, uh, okay, you know, but I, I, we, there has been some up and down. We're coming up on a lookout. I'll get another clip there. Well, from what I can tell, there's nothing dangerous about this lookout. Wood looks pretty sturdy to me. So let's come over here to the edge and take a look. There's a creek down below. Now, if you've noticed, there's neighborhoods right here all around the park. So, I mean, even though you're, you, it's a nice natural area in, the, in, in Cary, you know, you're not out in the forest or anything. So, now there was a sign back there that said there are deer in here. Oh, no, no, there's no deer. 
<laughs> I did not read that one to you. And of course you got a trash can here. That's always good to have. I'm glad to see a lot of trash cans, a lot of benches. Um, so if you wanted to, to bring the wife and just uh, have a nice day at, uh, at, a, at a nice park here in Cary and uh, enjoy some, well, I call them brief hikes. Uh, you know, we're still going on this trail, so it's, uh, I'm getting some exercise. You do, do get a little up and down. Let's, uh, let's keep on going. Just kind of look around. There you go. So I'm coming up on another sign. Forest in progress. Hardwood forest. Lababale branch. A few large Lababale ponds remain from the farm abandonment and should soon, but soon hardwoods like oaks will take over in most places. So anyway, you can look. We're, that we just did, I guess that was the Chestnut Oak Trail. And then this is the Beech Tree Cove Trail. And uh, so if you went that way, you go back to the parking lot. But uh, so far I haven't seen anything. I mean, I, so I'm going to do the... Well, I mean, we, I, we just did what I think is one of the longest trails from the sign that I saw. So I'm going to do the Beech Tree Cove Trail here. And see, here's another bench. And uh, you can see, boy, look at that pine tree right there. Holy moly. Man, okay, so so we're just gonna go on around this. Uh, you know, I have nothing else. I just turn back and go back to the parking lot. I mean, I don't think it's any big deal. So here's another viewing area. And I uh, just kind of looking off at the, boy, that tree's kind of wild looking. And uh, look at here. So the, uh, so this is, uh, this is comes, these are a bunch of stairs that go down to a viewing area and I need to get my exercise. So let's go take those stairs and go down to the viewing area. It says Beech Tree Cove. So there you go. So let's go look at Beech Tree Cove up close and personal. Now, if you look at the sign here, West Hemlock Bluffs is this way. So we're going to take that trail next. And then of course, park entrance is going that way. So let's, uh, let's head on down these stairs and get some exercise. So I don't know if you can see that, but they are replacing some of the wood on this structure. So maybe they've got some rotten wood and that's what they're doing. Um, so anyway, but this is, uh, I, I'm wondering if that is a, the beech tree right here. Look at all, everybody's carved their initials in the tree. How stupid can you be? I guess maybe that's why they put this viewing platform here so people can't get down there. I don't blame them. So, but this is Beech Tree Cove. I mean, that's pretty cool looking. I don't know if anybody ever kayaks that river or anything, or creek. I, I don't know, it looks a little shallow to be able to, to do anything with it. So I don't know where the people are coming from to get down there and carve their initials in that tree. But um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you what we came down. That's just what we came down, so I'm going to hike back up now. And that was the viewing stand we were just on right up there. Okay, and let's look at this massive tree right here. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Well, I just came up that, got the heart rate up. I like the up and down here. And uh, you can see they've done a burn here. And then of course, coming up on a trash can here. And I'm not sure, there's another trail going off to the left. Let's see what we got here. West Hemlock Bluffs. Well, I think, is that the one we already did? I think so. Because there's the, uh, yeah, there's the mulch. So I think we may have done the whole thing. Let's see, I'm, I'm gonna go look at this. I think we are, this is the first one we did when we came in. You know, I, I can't remember, hold on. So West Hemlock Bluffs just brought us down to another viewing stand. And uh, this is the view from here. Danger, keep off the bluffs. I wonder if that's a hemlock tree right there. I don't know, it's kind of a different kind of bark on it. Of course, see to the left here, you've got the uh, pine trees growing up on the side there. So I imagine once upon a time, you probably just stood in the dirt down there, but they built these uh, viewing platforms to preserve the area, which is good. Uh, so, but uh, this is the view. Here's a tree down with the root system up. Let's get the canopy up here a little bit. All right, so basically what that trail was, it wasn't a trail, it was just West Hemlock Bluffs. It's just a little little stair climb. I uh, come down here to get to that viewing area. So no, this wasn't the trail that I'd done before. So let's keep on going. So once again, I'm seeing some new mulch here. So uh, I did feel a drop of rain. So I, I do hope we're heading back to the parking lot, which I think we are. 
but uh because i really don't want to get wet but i uh, thought it wasn't supposed to rain till tonight but i like i said one forecast said about five o'clock so we'll see what happens but anyway let's uh you can see all this all new all this new mulch so what they had to put on that sign was uh doing trail maintenance and i wouldn't have done it you know i figure i can judge the caution but i but of course, you know, even doing maintenance, I mean, you could still let people hike it until you got a crew in here. I mean, right now, nobody's here. You know, once you got a crew out doing maintenance and shut down the trail, say so crew's out doing maintenance, uh, uh, you know, do not hike. Boom, that's all you need. Just like uh, the guys when they're doing lawn mowing, you know, lawn mowers ahead. You know, do not, uh, you know, caution, lawn mowers ahead, whatever. All right, so we're coming up on a sign. Let's see what we got here. Might as well leave the video on rather than cut it off and take a clip. So I'm gonna make a left because I think that's going back towards the parking lot. And there, yeah, I think I see the control burn that we originally saw. So here we go. Beach, Nut Beach Tree Co, Chestnut Oak Trail, West Hemlock Bluffs, park entrance, there you go. So uh, the only piece of the trail that we did not do was come up this. Uh, this was the, the uh, cause I, I went around this way. So well, you, you know, we could have taken that detour to get up to the, uh, the park entrance. Uh, let's read this one last sign. Let's see what we got. Fire wheels regeneration. Okay, yeah, uh, we know all about that. So let's head on back to the parking lot. So as I get back to the uh, caution sign, the only thing I can think of is that they're doing control burns back there. And uh, so that's why they want to keep the, uh, the public out, but that's what they got to put on the sign, you know, but when there's no, Nobody here, <laughs> you know, I, don't think, I just pull it up and let people hike the dog on trail, you know, let the community enjoy it. So I wanted to summarize the trail. Very, very, very pretty. Lots of huge trees. I mean, 70 years old, I guess, uh, according to that one sign. And uh, and uh, it was a lot, a bit of up and down, a lot of stairs. Uh, so, you know, you're going to get a, a little bit of a workout. Not, not a hugely long hike, but that's all that my body could take today because I think I've been hiking four straight days now. Well, because I mean, you can hike here and carry forever and not cover all these places. But, and like I said, the reason I'm here at this place is uh, my, it's right next to my uncle's house here in Cary. So, because I do have relatives here. And uh, so it was convenient. I had no idea it was so close to his house. I've been to his house, well, in many years I haven't been to his house, but I mean, you know, way back years ago, you would think we would have come here and hiked this at some point, but my parents, you know, they weren't really into the, the nature thing. I had, at that time, he was a member of a country club. I, I want to say Lock, Lockheed Country Club. And uh, so they were just into the golf, you know, which is fine. You know, I was into the golf back then too, so that, but I mean, I, I, even then I still liked hiking around the woods, even when I was young. I mean, it's kind of a lifelong thing for me. So, uh, but I, uh, so we'll get on out of here and uh, I got some, uh, what did they say, uh, Indian food waiting for me at my buddy's house. And I haven't had Indian food in quite some time, so that should be good. All right, peace out, stay free, let's do the mantra. Freedom, oh freedom. Someday it will be good to live again in the free Republican state of Florida where we have no vaccine mandates, no mask requirements, and we are free to come and do as we please. And if you're a Democrat, don't move to Florida, go to California, go to New York, go to Illinois, you know, those places would, would appreciate you. I think you're going to find a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of Republicans in Florida these days, because actually at this point we have more registered Republicans than Democrats, so you'd be in the minority at this point. Maybe not for too many more years. It could flop back. You never know. Peace out and stay free. So when, let's get the uh, the day, day on the on the map. So we parked in the lower parking lot here because I always park away from the cars. We came out, we went down these stairs, did, 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 and we did the uh, Swift Creek Trail loop, came up, boom, okay. Hiked around the center a little bit, came up here, Woo, boom, took a left, went down the Chestnut Oak Loop Trail, came all the way down. You can see the elevations posted. That's pretty cool to have that. Then we came up, we did the Chestnut Oak Overlook, boom, came up. Uh, let's see. So we came up, well, where was it saying? I think this would have been the sign to, we didn't do this. This is a little piece that we didn't do because that's a go back to the parking lot. So we didn't take that. We went down here, we did the beech tree, Cove overlook came up here. We did the West Hemlock Bluffs overlook came up here and then we just wound our way back to the parking lot. So that was the hike for the day.
All right, cool. So we got everything but one little teeny piece of the trail. And I wasn't going to hike back down and then just hike back up. It didn't really make sense to me. I didn't think there'd be a lot to see on that. All right. Once again, peace out, stay free. That's the last clip on this video.